guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. So today's video, I wanted to do something in regard to my Instagram because I've actually been doing Instagram for quite a long time, I believe about two years, and I've managed to get myself up to 31.6 thousand followers, I believe. I've had a lot of questions on my Instagram about how I edit my photos and what's the best way to edit my photos in regard to like growing an Instagram, etc. So I thought, why don't I just do a video to show you how I edit my photos. I'm not saying that this is the way that you should edit your photos in order to grow and I'm not saying that this is the best way to edit your photos. I know a lot of people and especially bigger influencers have their own unique style on how to edit their photos but I just thought why not I just give you an insight on how I edit my photos and how I can help you edit your own photos for your Instagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually show a few of my Instagram photos just on the screen for you just so that you can get a bit of a gist on how you can see how I edit my photos or what my photos actually look like. So what I normally do is I normally just like group all of my my apps that I use in just like one folder so this is just called a photo and video folder and to be honest I don't use all of oh 10% did you see that <laughs> to be honest I don't actually use all of these apps but the first app that I normally use is Adobe Photoshop Lightroom this is completely free and I'm just gonna quickly show you a photo so these are all the photos I do I just pretty much upload all of the photos and I'm gonna show you how I edited this one so this is the original and this is the after as you can see, the background is a bit of a mess on that photo. You can see my mic, you can see my laptop. And there is actually a way that I know how to like get rid of this and how you can get rid of wires in the background, etc. Because let's be honest, sometimes you might take a photo, don't actually realise how dirty your background is until you find a photo that you like and you're like, I don't really want to do this again. But yeah, so this is the photo I'm just going to show you for the purpose of the video. So as you can see, this is the before and this is the after. So, okay, because I've been doing this quite a long time and I know exactly how I like my photos, I've actually created my own um, preset and there's quite a few actually that I use. I've gone back and forth quite a lot of them, like an all natural filter. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, that doesn't actually look natural at all because sometimes it all depends on what filter you use like the lighting that's in your room etc so if it's a little bit dark and then some of your photos sometimes something's not some things are just not going to work but let me just have a look so editing so this is the one that I use the most what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go all the way back so that I am good so I'm, yeah I'm just going to reset the photo so this is the original photo so I'm just going to apply my preset which is called editing here and I'm, just, and I'm just gonna show you what I actually use. So on this photo, what I've done is I've just upped the exposure to 0 0.48 because sometimes if your photo isn't too dark, you don't wanna up the exposure too much. However, if it is a little bit dark, the plan that I normally do is I don't really up the exposure a lot. I just up the shadows and the blacks just to make it obviously the shadows that are in your photo, if the areas on the photo that are a bit darker that you wanna pop, this is 100% ideal. Also, what I will recommend if you want really good lighting, always do it during like the highest point in the day where there's a lot more sunlight. Make sure that you are by a window, etc. So something that lights up your bedroom. If you don't have a window that dramatically lights up your bedroom, 100% use a ring light. However, just because you have really good lighting, sometimes a photo will come across quite dark and this is where editing comes in. So going back onto the photo. So what I've done is I've upped my exposure by 0.48 and I normally turn down the contrast. So I'm just gonna show you, if I have contrast in the middle, can you see it going a bit more orange and it's a lot more darker? And I'm not necessarily a fan of it. I don't think it shows my true skin tone. I'm not necessarily that dark, but also as well, I like to change with the colors of my tan on here. So when I have contrast at zero or higher, it just doesn't look right. So I'm just going to turn it up. So this is what it's going to look like as a contrast. So I like to turn it down a little bit. So it just almost looks a bit, I don't know, but yeah, I like to turn it down a little bit. So I had it down to seven, didn't I? Well, I'm just going to leave it at 11. And highlights, again, I normally turn down. The thing is with editing, it all depends on what sort of like look that you're looking for. So my Instagram is mainly mirror photos, purely because I like to show off the outfit. Mine's more of a fashion Instagram. Sometimes I turn down highlights because it shows off the features a lot more. You don't get the horrible light. You know when you take photos, sometimes you get like white dots from where the sunlight is directly hit the highest points of your skin. You get that. So I like to turn down highlights. So I'm just gonna put it down to zero just to show you what it looks like. It's not a much of a difference. But as you can see, the little highlights by the wicker basket and just on my bralette here, it kind of like looks a bit more white. So when you turn it down, 
it's not going to be too overpowering okay if i turn it up it's just going to make it more whiter which some people do like the look of because it makes the background whiter but yeah so i turn it down just so that i can let all the details pop in my outfit and now what i do is i turn my shadows up so i turn my shadows up to 33 again i'm just going to put it down to zero just to show you so as you can see like the fur is a lot more darker there's a little bit of shadows like under my chin and my eye area and, and just on the outfit etc so i do like to turn it up as you can see there's a difference and it also because there's one side of my face has a bit of a shadow effect if i turn it up it just makes my it makes the side of my face look more a bit not in the shadow you know whites i don't actually really touch depending on if i've got a lot of sunlight in the photo or there's too much lighting in the photo and it's too white and it's washing out any of the colors i will turn the whites down if the photo is too dark i would turn it up but to be honest i don't think this photo was necessarily that dark so i've left it i've actually put it at plus one which must have been an accident but it obviously worked and my blacks are actually up quite high it's at plus 73 which is quite high so if i pull it down to zero you can see that the photo's gotten a bit dark if i turn it down it just makes the photo a bit darker so i just turn it up quite a lot to how i like it and i did generally like it quite high i just think it shows all the colors properly okay so that is just the basics of what i do just to make the photo brighter etc so now the next part i go to is color and color is actually really perfect i like this tool because what it does is you can choose individual colors in your outfit or what sort of colors that you want to pop a lot more or edit a bit more in the photo so some photos have you seen some instagrammers their photos are a bit more a lot whiter the colors aren't popping as much it's kind of like a vintagey kind of look so what they do is they actually turn down the saturation of some of the colors just to make it not pop as much so what i like to do is oops so what I like to do is I like to turn up the vibrance because what it does is it makes every single color in the photo pop. So this is what it is at zero and I turned it up just a little bit to make the blue and my skin tone pop a little bit more. And then what I do is I go into mix. So mix is where you can choose all the individual colors. Okay, so on the red, I haven't really touched it. Okay, I pull it at plus three. Again, that might have been by a mistake. So I'm just gonna turn it down. Okay, so the orange. The orange a lot of people use to make their skin look a bit more tanned, etc. I haven't actually done too much in this. Normally, sometimes I turn up the saturation, but because I've turned up the vibrant, the orange tone in my skin is already quite potent if you know what i mean so what i've done was i've turned down the luminance and i love turning down the luminance because what this does is it makes your skin tone a little bit darker so if you've got some fake tan and it's fading a little bit or you don't look as tanned as how you normally do this is perfect just to make your skin look a bit more tanned so i just like pop it down a little bit as you can see this is at number zero and i'm just going to pop it down just a tiny bit and you can just see the difference Okay, so I'm just going to go on all the other colours. A lot of the time as well, I turn down the yellow tones. My walls are a cream colour in the bedroom, which I really don't like. But yeah, they're a cream colour and I would prefer my walls to be a bit more whiter. So what I do is I turn the saturation down. I got it at minus 58, but sometimes I would turn it down to zero. So this is what it looks like at zero, but can you see it's just a bit more greyer and so I'm not really a fan of it. So I've left it at about... 58 56 and again you can change the luminous so if you put the luminous down i mean it doesn't look too great but it makes the background just a little more darker and you can turn it up to make the background look a bit more whiter so it's up to you what sort of preference that you like to do i just like to just leave it sometimes i pull it up sometimes i pull it down depending on the photo and how it looks greens i've left it okay it's at minus one again might be a mistake blue so this is different i've upped the saturation on the blue because of the jeans so it's not much as you can see like if you can see by the leg area let me just show you the leg area it's a bit more of a different colored blue so that is what that's affecting you can kind of turn it down turn it all the way down so you don't really have that problem but yeah it doesn't really bother me that's just because of the lighting in the photo the lights kind of like hit that bottom of my jeans it's just made it a bit lighter so it doesn't matter really too much and then i go on to the other blue which is the shade of the jeans and i've actually turned the saturation down the reason why i've turned the saturation down is just purely because of the vibrance i've had the vibrance up so it's made that color pop if i was to put it to zero i mean that just looks unrealistic that blue just doesn't look right so i've turned the saturation down because that looks like a proper jean i've also turned down the luminous just to make it a bit more darker because sometimes as well with photos it doesn't translate the color of the jeans properly so i would turn i've just turned it down to make it look more realistic and the hue so i don't normally change the color too much when it comes to denim 
denim and the colours of my jeans. But sometimes I like to change the hue, so which is the colour of the jeans. I liked how it looked anyway, that is more realistic and that shows the actual true colour of the jeans. But sometimes I would turn it down to make it just look more of like a um, sea blue kind of thing. But to be honest, I wanted to keep it as true as possible to the colour of the jeans. Purples, again, nothing much here and pinks nothing much here again that would change depending on the color of the outfit if i am wearing a pink i would change it change play with the hue saturation luminance luminance etc um same with purple it all just depends on the color of the outfit and i don't actually take any outdoor photos because my instagram is based on clothing but if i was to take some outdoor photos again i would probably play with like the greens the yellows the blues etc for the sky but yeah, it all just depends on what your photo is and what colours that you want to change. And effects. This I found was a massive game changer. And a lot of my friends that are influencers that are, well, that are around about the same following as me, they don't do this. And I 100% recommend that you do actually do this. So I highly recommend that you use textures because I just think with textures, it just brings out all the little textures and details in your outfit. So it does kind of similar to what sharp the sharpening tool does. But I just think it's it goes a bit deeper than that, you know? So I'm just going to pull it down to zero. And as you can see, if you look at my jeans, they look okay. It's because I'm using a good quality camera to take the photo. But you can see that the um, denim, etc. isn't necessarily popping. And I want that to pop. You can see the ribbed material on the bralette isn't necessarily popping as much. Um, yeah, So and that is what I want to do. I want all of that detail to pop. So I'm just going to zoom in so that you can actually see the difference. So this is at zero and I'm just going to pop it up and can you see that all the little denim material, the rib material, etc. is popping a lot more. So I'm just going to pull it back to zero. You can see it's just looking a bit dull. Like I said, it already looks quite good quality because I'm using a good camera, but just popping it up a bit more makes photos look a lot more better, look more realistic. Things are popping through, you know, so I like that. It depends how many, how much you want to pop. Just be wary that it does actually add texture to your skin and your body, etc. So you just need to be wary of that. So I do it about middle. Depends on what sort of texture and what sort of things that I want to bring in the outfit again. But especially with dem denim, I like to pop it up a bit more. I don't think that's. Oh, I don't think that's it for this section. Nope. So that's just it. And then I go on to details. So details is your sharpening tool. I like to sharpen my photos quite a lot because. I think that the secret to making your videos and photos, etc., more higher quality is to sharpen your photos because you get more of the detail. So again, I've just popped it to 69, <laughs> 69. It's not, I don't think it makes much of a difference, but I'm just gonna pop it down to zero so that you can see what it looks like before I've sharpened it. And then I'm just gonna pop it up to 79. You can see it's still more, it's a bit sharpened. It's popping the detail a bit more, but just not a bit over the top and then if I, so annoying, and then if I go down, I pop up the colour noise reduction as well. So the colour noise reduction just basically just means that you don't have any colours like seeping into one another. Um, it, I don't think it does a lot, but I've just turned it down to zero to show you. And now I've just popped it up. You can see it kind of like reduces the noise on colours. So you know how some photos have this like grainy kind of like pixelated, um, look to it it's because there's noise on the photo so if you just up it a little bit it reduces the noise so you do have a section here which is noise reduction i'm just going to turn it up just to show you what it actually does so i've just turned it up to show you what it does as you can see it's like blurring a lot of stuff i almost look like a cartoon so that's basically what the noise reduction does so it does it for the whole photo i don't normally use that I just use the color reduction so that basically just bases it on all the different colors making sure that they don't seep into one another this again i think is a game changer i mean it's not necessary i just think that works perfect for me so i'm just going to save that i'm just going to export it to my camera roll so there's not really much i do with this photo i do go into face tune and i think face tune has such a bad reputation but let's be honest face tune is quite handy for certain things that you want to use so i'm just going to get the photo so this is the photo over here okay as you can see it's looking a bit like grainy that's just because of the texture and the sharpening tool that i've put on and because it's such a high like pixelated photo so but if i was to zoom in it's not like that okay so all i really do is i don't really use too much i use the retouch and i do and i won't lie to you i do use the smoothing tool i don't use it a lot i would just rub it across my skin just to give my skin like a bit of a smoother effect i suppose so it just rub it across and I would just turn it down to like 36. So it's not really that noticeable 
as you can see, but you can just see a little bit of smoothing. And then the next one I use is the details tool and I just run over anything that is like denim, etc. So not all of the denim, just a little details here. So the zip, the pockets, anything that has like metal material or jewelry, 100% jewelry is the one thing that I run over. My necklace here, just to make it pop a little bit and some of the rib detailing. So I just tap it gently so that you don't get a lot. And I just tap it. Nope. Oh yeah, and I just tap it so that you can just see the difference. And then I normally go to the bottom of my jeans as well, just to give it that extra something, something. So normally I just go from the seams on the jeans and that's pretty much it when it comes to the sharpening tool. So here's the before, here's the after. So you can see it just literally pops certain details. That's a bit too much. I'm just gonna go over with the eraser. So that's pretty much it. I didn't really do much on the bralette, which maybe I should have. Yep, that's pretty much that. So I just clicked okay in that. So now you can see all these like little horrible bits in the background. So I, I know I need to get a new drawer, but it's broken there. Um, you've got wires about, you've got my mic here, you've got a random shoe here, which why is there a random shoe? And you've got a headphone case there. So what I normally do is I'm just gonna save this photo. And I'm gonna go into the app Retouch. So Retouch is an app that you have to pay for. I don't think it's a lot, I think it's like 1.99. But this is perfect for getting rid of all these wires. So I use Object Removal, and I would literally just go over the wires, like that, and click Go. And what it does is, okay, you can see there's a bit of wonky line there. But what it does is, it just gets rid of all the things that you want to, and it blends it in with the background. So as you can see, it's just drawn the line there, where the um, set of drawers is, like that. So it doesn't disrupt the actual background when you're getting rid of things. So I'm just gonna get rid of that, because that's the top popping out of the drawer. So that's pretty much what I do. I get rid of all of this here and it will just, like I said, oh, that went wrong. I'm just gonna get rid of the, all these bits here and it won't disrupt the background. And it just meld in. Okay, like I'm just doing this really roughly. But yeah, if you just take a bit of your time with it, like it just won't ruin it. So like the head phone case here. So yeah, that's all done. Um, and what I'd also do is, well, I'm just gonna actually show you. On Facetune, I use the patch tool here. So if you don't wanna purchase the retouch tool, you can actually use Facetune because on the patch side, they now have this vanish thing. I don't think they've had, so you can actually just go over the wires with this and it'll get rid of it without disrupting the background. Like, so I just find retouch is a lot more better, so don't really use it. But with these horrible drawers here, I just normally use the, um, patch and the bit where the drawer doesn't look so bad i just add it on just for purposes i'm just doing this rough so this is the actual finished photo where the wires are all gone you can't see any of the wires here this is the photo that I actually made it on my instagram you can't see the drawers i don't even know why i never done the bottom drawer but yeah the third app that i use is called cooney cam which i don't think a lot of people use i found this out from sarah ashcroft and all i do is i'm just going to use this photo for reference i just up the brightness by about 13 and i just add a little bit of grain on it and then i save it and that's pretty much it and then i upload it onto instagram Instagram. Okay, so that's it. That's how I edit my Instagram photos and I hope this kind of helped you if you wanted to know how I edit my photos or how to get the best quality or make your photos look a bit more better quality than what it is. One thing I will say is I highly recommend getting a good camera. So I've got the Canon G7X camera. You don't actually have to use a camera like this to take photos can use your iPhone. iPhone have really good and amazing cameras. And that's pretty much what I had been using until I started doing YouTube. And I thought, I just want to step up my Instagram game. Let's actually use a better quality camera. That is how I edit my photos. Highly recommend getting a really good quality something to take your photos with. Yeah, so those are the apps that I use. I will make sure to put them in the description box so that you know exactly what sort of apps that I did use. But I hope that helped you. I hope that provided a bit of insight on how I, you know, do my Instagram photos. But yeah, I hope you like this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the post notification bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video. That would be amazing. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.